Ulbricht tells judge, I'm not going to testify, by Joe Mullen. The Silk Road Trial, v. all? New York? Ross Ulbricht's lawyers began his defense case today, and it promises to be a short one? Very short. The half hour or so of testimony today, which included three character witnesses, will be combined with an estimated hour of direct testimony tomorrow. Unless something surprising happens, closing arguments will take place tomorrow afternoon. The government has spent 10 days laying out its case that Elbricht is the mastermind behind the Silk Road drug trafficking website. He could face life in prison if convicted. Ulbricht will not be testifying on his own behalf. That decision was put off by Ulbricht and his lawyers until today, but U.S. District Judge Catherine Forrest asked Ulbricht about it directly after testimony finished today. I'm not going to testify, Your Honor, he replied. Two expert witnesses who Albrecht's lawyers wanted to testify won't be allowed to do so. Forrest forbade either from talking to the jury in a ruling, PDF, made this morning. Defense lawyers wanted to call Andreas Antonopoulos to testify as an expert about Bitcoin and Columbia University computer science professor Stephen Belovin to testify on a variety of computer issues. Forrest criticized the defense for not giving enough lead time on the witnesses saying disclosures on both experts were essentially too little too late. The late disclosures about experts was a tactical choice on the part of the defense, Forrest wrote. She continued, It is clear that the possibility that defendant might want to call one or more expert witnesses was long known. Indeed, as stated, defense counsel opened on a theory that somehow Ulbricht was framed in a manner involving undefined technical processes, and he opened on statements about bitcoins and fluctuations in their value. Defense counsel had an early focus and cross-examination on BitTorrent running on defendant's computer. Providing deficient notices? Filling, as they both do, to provide the basic information that Rule 16 on its face requires? Was yet another tactical choice. Peacefulness and non-violence. The defense began its case after 4 p.m. here and called three character witnesses in quick succession. First up was Karen Arnold, a 72-year-old mental health counselor who is a longtime friend of Ulbricht and his family. Arnold and her husband had two children who were close in age to Ross Ulbricht and his sister, and the families became deeply intertwined. We're like twin families, Arnold testified. He would stay with us at our house. Our kids would stay at his house. We'd all visit together. Because, you know, to have a family that matches like that is pretty special, so we spend a lot of time together. Do you have any knowledge of Ross' reputation in the community for peacefulness and non-violence? Asked defense lawyer Lindsay Lewis. Yes, I do, Arnold said. What is that reputation? Everyone I know who knows Ross sees him as a very peaceful and non-violent person, Arnold said. He's compassionate, gentle. He always has been, from the time he was a little child. Next was Daniel Davis, a 30-year-old computer mapping expert for Austin's Watershed Protection Department. Davis has known Ulbricht since middle school. Lewis asked him a similar question about Ulbricht's reputation for peacefulness and non-violence. I mean, he's one of the most peaceful people I know and his reputation among our friend group is the same, Davis said. He is a very generous, kind, peaceful person. Davis was the only one of the character witnesses who prosecutor Saren Turner chose to cross-examine. Turner, he never told you that he created the Silk Road website? Davis, no, he did not. Turner, he never told you he grew illegal drugs? Davis, no. We never discussed that. Turner, never told you he lived under a fake name for a while? Davis. No, he never told me that. Turner, did he ever tell you that he ordered nine fake IDs for himself? Lewis objected and was overruled. No, answered Davis. The final witness of the day was Thomas Haney, a high school friend of Elbrick's, who now lives in Virginia. Again Lewis asked about Elbrick's reputation for peacefulness and non-violence. He is an extremely calm, kind, and loving person, said Haney. That's something that always impresses everyone that really knows him that I've talked to him about him. Lewis didn't have any more questions, and testimony concluded for the day. 
This is one of two posts about the 10th day of the Silk Road drug trafficking trial. For all posts, see our 